Glory, church. Amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for His good, His mercy, and do it forever. We thank God for another Sunday school lesson. We thank God for coming here from Praise Temple today, and we're going to get into the Word of God. Brand new quarter today. Amen. Amen. And we're starting the spring quarter, and today we're dealing with training is the, is the quarter objective. Amen. And today we're dealing with instructions in a, to a troubled church, and today we're going to deal with the church at Corinth. Amen. That church at Corinth was a very dynamic and gifted church. Amen. But yeah. they had some isms and schisms along with their dynamicness of the things of God. Amen. And yeah. uh, Paul was here addressing the church. Uh, and it, and this is the first part of, of the first Corinthians where he is trying to help them um, deal with things uh, that are causing divisions in the body of Christ. Amen. So let's go ahead and look at our lesson today. We say praise the Lord, to everybody who's with us. We ask that if you're on Facebook with us to share us, amen, and be able to uh, send us out there with our with your family and friends that we may be able to encourage somebody else, amen. amen. So as we do that, praise God. We just want to be an encouragement this morning to the saints. Um, to the saints of God. I'm trying to share mine right now. How about that? Share. Uh, uh oh. I'm going to figure it out. I'll bear with because I want to be. All right. There we go. Amen. So let's turn that off. All right. So uh, today, uh, let's go ahead and go through these first patches of scripture. Let's read verses one and two. And um, this first section talks about gratitude. For the church. Amen. Remember, Amen. Paul went on these missionary journeys, set these churches up in these different locations, and now he's writing letters back to them to try to encourage them because he heard some things that are going on in the church. Amen. So Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God. And some of these are brother unto the church of God, which is at Corinth to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints with all that in every place, call upon the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. Amen. So here, Paul is, is as in a traditional introduction of Paul's writing. Paul's let him know that it is he that is writing the letter. Amen. And Paul identifies himself as the apostle. Amen. He identifies himself as the overseer of the church. And that's what gives Paul the authority to encourage and instruct the church. Amen. And he says, what? Through what? The will of God. Amen. And some of these are brothers. He's talking about here that, that it was God that, that that allowed Paul to do this. Amen. Amen. Remember Paul's experience on the Damascus road. You know, Paul wasn't looking for God, but God was looking for him. Amen. And when God found Paul, he, he empowered Paul, amen, to be this one to go and be a great witness to these bodies of cities to build, amen, churches. Uh, in throughout the Roman Empire at the time, one was here at a place called Corinth, a very uh, a place of in the area of Ephesus, a place where uh, a lot of things were going on in those cities. Amen. Things that were not godly were going on. So Paul was dealing with conversions of people who were coming out of a man, diverse backgrounds, a man and doing have and they have raised an environment where they've been able pretty much to do whatever they want to do. Now, Paul is trying to put on what uh, one of my pastors, they try to put guardrails on their lives, <laughs> try to direct them and instruct them to do what they're, they need to do to be pleasing unto God. Amen. So he goes on down to, and he says unto the church of God, amen, that is at Corinth, the church, 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 you belong to God. The church is God's body. Amen. And uh, sometimes people get it messed up. They think you belong to them. Praise them. We don't, we, we, you don't belong to me. You belong to God. And Paul is making that very clear here that uh, he's only here to help you, amen, get more in touch with God. I'm a firm believer that the leader of a ministry should be able to help you get closer with God and not just closer to them. Praise him. Uh, 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 they, actually, your relationship should grow with the Lord. Amen. And become more like Christ. Amen. And 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 if there is a place where you may be attending and, and, and you're getting more like the leader and not more like God. Amen. You need to, uh, you know, kind of reevaluate 
because that person can't save you. Amen. Amen. God can save you through Jesus Christ. So that's why we got to get more like Jesus Christ. And guess what? Watch this. The more I get like Jesus Christ, praise the God. And if the leader is following, uh, 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 Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. If the leader is following Christ. Both of you are going to become more like Christ. Amen. And less like what you used to be. So that's what Paul was dealing with. Paul was trying to get him to understand that it's time for you to, uh, you know, he said in one aspect, come out from among you and be you what? Separate, saith the Lord. Amen. He said unto the church of God that is at Corinth and to them that are what? Sanctified. Them that are what? Set apart. Amen. The process. Now, we talked about sanctification. Someone tell me what you think sanctification is. Just give me a couple of key words there. Holy. 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 What else? Righteous. Praise God. Goodness. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. It, uh, sanctification is the is, is a process of that taking place in your life. You know, mom baked that cake, right? Mom didn't come home, praise God, with a flour and then threw the flour in the oven and a cake came out. Mama had to take that flour and had to mix it with some other ingredients, go through the what? The process. And then the process of baking, then you get a cake, the end product. So, you know, there's a common belief that once I'm in church, I'm okay. That's not the truth. When you come into the house of God, amen, you start walking with Christ. There's a lot of stuff that God got to get out of you. And God got to put some stuff in you. Amen. amen. That you come out, amen, a finished product. Amen. That, 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 that when, when I've been tried, I'll come forth as what church? Pure gold. Amen. So, so, so sanctification is a process of righteousness, a process of what? Goodness. A process of becoming what? Holy and acceptable unto God. Any comments, questions right there? Come on, Dick, talk to me about that process. You got, I know you got something to say. It's just about the process of sanctification of becoming I, holy. I, the first thing that came to my mind is you, you got you, you to separate yourself from uh, the evil of the world. Amen. You got to separate yourself. That's the first thing. And you, you got to give up something. Yes, sir. That's, that's what I see. Amen. You got to give up something, but whatever you give up, God's going to bless you with something else. Amen. Praise God. Anybody else about that process of sanctification? I want to hear from you all today. Yes, go ahead, D. Murray. The first thing that comes to mind is that uh, don't get weary and well doing. Yes, so, sir. In that process, there must be some peace and valley along the way. But we got to Amen. Peace and valley, standing fast with the Lord. Yes, go ahead. Yes. Amen. Ask for God's leading and guidance. Yes. Sanctification. Amen. Praise him. So taking it one day at a time. So there, there it is. That there's that step-by-step -step process of coming to the, the sanctification of God. Amen. Praise God. He says here, that, that, and those that are what? Those that are sanctified and those who are sanctified are now called to be saints. Amen. Praise God. Called by God to be separate and representatives of the most high God. Amen. And he says, and with and with all in every place, call upon the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. So here he's letting know that we have to call on the name of the Lord church. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. He says in Romans, he that if shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's what he says. But guess what? That saving is not just salvation. That saving is deliverance. That saving is healing. That saving, amen, praise God, is God making ways for us. Amen. We got to call on Jesus, amen, and receive his spirit, amen, that we can be qualified by God, acceptable unto God, amen, to be, uh, it, uh, to be able to see his face in peace. Amen. You know what? Salvation and being saved is about the day of judgment. That's what it's about. It's about, praise God, having somebody or somebody stand on your behalf when the enemy starts accusing us as brethren. Because the Bible calls Jesus, our, we have an advocate with who? The Father. Amen. And he's going to advocate or present our case on that day. Yeah. And when we have been, and been saved by the blood of Christ, praise the Lord, and filled with his spirit, God will have, Jesus will have the ability to say, well done. Thy good 
and faithful service. If you don't have the blood on your life through baptism and have, have be filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, you actually watch this. You actually lock God's hands from saying, well done. It wasn't God that did that. You did that. Amen. So salvation is about what you decide to do. God has given salvation to who? To every man. Every man, every man, every woman. But I have to receive the power of God, receive the grace of God through the spirit of God. Amen. And that's why he says here that those who call on the name of Jesus Christ, both them, them and us. Amen. Praise God. He says here in verse three, he first thing he tells us, do what? Have grace. Verse three, grace be unto you. And peace from God, our father. And from what? The Lord Jesus Christ. So, so now he wants us to experience the, the unmerited favor of God. You know what, church? We want to make sure and we should express that everybody enjoys God's unmerited favor. Yeah. One of the greatest things that God shares is his, is his grace. Amen. He'll share his grace but he won't share his glory. Uh -huh. Amen. And we got to make sure we keep that straight. Praise God. Amen. We have to glorify him. And the more we glorify him, the more he has the ability or the propensity to share his grace in our lives. Yeah. Amen. So, 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 uh, uh, the writer of Proverbs says, there's a way to seem right to a man, but the ends thereof are what? The ways of death. Praise God. What he's saying is that if we lean to our own understanding, we're going to be messed up. Mm -hmm. But if we follow uh, the, 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 the ways of God, God has promised to help us make it through to see what the end is going to be. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. And too many times today, people are just what? They're doing it their way. And guess what? Their way is not the way of God. Amen. It's, it's it, it, but. It's so interesting that the prop, the writer of Proverbs says, it seem like they're doing, they seem like they're doing the right thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, I'm doing, I'm trying to do everything I can. That's the problem. You're trying to do everything you can instead of leaning on letting the Lord do something for you. Amen. So, so we have to learn how to trust in the Lord. That's what he said. Trust in the Lord and lean not to what? Our own understanding. Amen. And, and that will open grace and peace. Amen. Unto our lives. Any questions, comments there about verse three? Anyone? Amen. Yes, sir. All right. Praise God. We'll keep on moving because this here, this really is the introduction of our whole quarter today. So Paul is, is trying to let us know, amen, that we are saints. We are called into the grace of God. We enjoy the peace. Or he says right there, we enjoy the peace of God. Amen. And because uh, he has uh, sanctified us, and because we have enjoyed his grace and because we have enjoyed his peace, it points us to verse number four. Uh -huh. And verse number four says, well, let's read verse number four together. Can we do that? Yeah. He says, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God, which is given to you by Jesus Christ. So, so after we realize church, everything God has done for us, we ought to, we ought to be thankful. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thankful, praise, thanksgiving. And being thankful will take you much further than being unthankful. Amen. He says, I thank my God always. On, and look, Paul is thanking God on their behalf. Amen. Uh, uh, for what? For what? The unmerited favor that God has given us. Praise the Lord. Each one of us have unmerited favor in our lives. You know, so many things could be so much worse than what they are, but except for God's favor and his grace in my life. Amen. Did you have your hand up there? Now, I, Go ahead, I sir. Just think when you're saying it that he was reading, I was reading it that the grace was, uh, you know, we can't earn grace. That's right. And so some people think that by going to Sunday school and doing all these work here that God, but it has to be given to us by God. Amen. Grace has to be something that's given to us by God. But 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 uh 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 uh, uh you know, I was looking. Second uh, Timothy talks about in the last days there's perilous times, right? And one of the first things that it says that happens in the last days, that they'll be unthankful and unholy. Amen. And right now, uh, 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 we kind of are experiencing that where, where people are just not happy about nothing. You ever, if you ran into somebody ain't happy about anything, I mean, they don't have joy about nothing. Everything is wrong. Amen. The lights are wrong. The carpet's wrong. Amen. The dog bark. He's wrong. Amen. Everything's wrong. They, 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 they cannot see. Amen. The grace of God working in their life. Amen. But by them just being alive another day, that's the grace of God. Because God given each one of us this day right now. 
And that's for something to be thankful about. Because watch this. Somebody didn't wake up this morning. I know we say that in the church. We say that all the time, don't we? Praise God. Thank you for what? For waking me up this morning and starting my way. But guess what? When when you run into somebody or you, you run into somebody that that, 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 that that has lost a loved one and they see that tomorrow's not promised, it'll, it'll change. It should change your perspective. Amen. Amen. You say, you know what? Tomorrow is not promised. Amen. I got to thank God for just seeing another day. Amen. He says here, I thank God always for the grace that is given to us by Christ. And what did Christ do? Christ did not. What did Jesus do for us? He died on the cross, right? For whose sin? His sin? Our sin. Praise God. Did he have to do that? No, no he didn't have to do that. But he did it. And for, for God so loved the world that what he what he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever what believe on him should not perish. But be able to obtain what? Everlasting life. Amen. So, he, so, so that is the grace that he give us. Because each one of us were sentenced to death. Praise him. But now we have the ability to have life and have that life more abundant in Christ. Praise him. Amen. Uh, uh, living for God right now. It's nothing compared to what we're going to experience when we get into his presence. Amen. This is the qualifying time of our life that we may be able, again, for Jesus to say, when we get to judgment day, well done. Well done. I'm looking for a well done. Yeah. Amen. Anybody else looking for a well done? Amen. Looking for a well done. Praise God. I need, I need a well done, Lord, and I'm trying to strive for that. Amen. He says here, amen, and that is the grace of God, what Christ did for us when we were dead in trespasses and sins, apart from the commonwealth of Israel, apart from God with no hope, no way to touch God. God, who was rich in mercy, was able to what? Reach down and pull us up. Amen? Questions, comments from anybody? Amen. Questions, comments? All right. We're going to keep on moving. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. He says here, look what he says in verse 5, that in everything ye are enriched by him. By him. <laughs> and in all utterance and in what? All knowledge. He's letting them know that God will touch every aspect of our lives. Watch this. If you allow him to. Ah, People love God to touch their spirit. They love to dance, don't they? And shout in the name of Jesus. They love to touch his emotions. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm hurt and broke. Lord, heal me. But when it gets to that pocketbook, hold up, God. I got that. <laughs> hold up, Jesus. I'm going to handle that myself. <laughs> Somebody know what I'm talking about, don't you? Guess what? God wants to touch what? Every facet, and every, every aspect of our lives. Because he is a holistic God. And he wants to, amen, you ought to want to experience him, what, holistically in every aspect of your life. Yeah. Amen? amen. And, and, and that is what the Lord wants to do. But he's let him know that it is this grace, praise God, that has enriched. I love that word enriched. That means that God is doing what? In building us up and infusing us with his grace and his mercy. Amen. Praise God. He, he is doing whatever he needs. Look, and then also he's able, praise God, to enrich us through through the words that we speak and through the information that we know. Praise God. Uh, if any man lack wisdom, let him do what? Let him ask God. Who else? Where else can you get wisdom like that? You got to pretty much, that's right, you got to pay for it. <laughs> But God said, what? Ask. And he'll give it to all men how? Liberally. Praise God. He'll give you wisdom in the midst of those situations that you're facing and you're dealing with. Can we say amen today? Amen. amen. He says here, amen, that uh, 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 in verse 6, even as the testimony of Christ was what? Confirmed in you, so that ye may come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So he says here that even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. What is the testimony of Christ that's confirmed in us? We're in Corinthians chapter one, verse one, for those who may not have our Sunday school books. But we're in Corinthians chapter one, verses chapter verses one through seven. How is how is the testimony of Christ in, in, in us? The testimony of Christ is what we have experienced. He wrote the Romans what? He says, praise God, that we are buried with him by what? Romans chapter six. We're buried with him by what? By what? Baptism. 
Therefore, we rise what in what the newness of life. So what baptism does is more than wash away our sin. What baptism does, it allows us because uh, what is it? What do you do when you testify in a in a court of law? You got to talk about what you either experienced or what has happened to you. Right. So you can't testify <laughs> about what your experience was with God if you never had that experience. And here Paul's letting them know, praise the Lord, that they have even what the testimony of Christ that was what confirmed in us. All of us need to have, watch this, not just see what God is doing, but we need to experience what God is doing in our lives. Watch this. Has anybody ever been healed by the Lord? I want to see a hand. Has anybody ever touched your body? Absolutely. Amen. Has God ever uh, 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 made a way when your back was up against the wall? Praise him. Amen. Guess what? Guess what? That testimony can now be what? Confirmed in you. So that, that's why the Bible says we overcome by what? The blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. And we fear not for our lives because God wants to take you from what you have heard about him to what you know about him. Praise him. I said, praise him that you may be able to encourage somebody else. And also that you may have the experience here on earth, what God's going to do when you get to heaven. Think about this. God heals us here, right? In the earth. Sick in my body, touch my body. But when I get to heaven, I shall be made whole. Because guess what? This, this corruption got to do what? Put on incorruption. This mortality got to put on what? Immortality. The healing nature of God is only to, to help you understand what God's going to fulfill when you make it to heaven. Praise him. It's not just about uh, fixing something in my body. It's about the testimony of God being confirmed in us. That's why uh, it was so easy for Christ to raise up Lazarus. I said it was easy for him. I said it was easy. It was no different than him uh, breaking bread and praying for fishes. And guess what, church? We need to have the same type of mindset. With if anybody got some faith today, I need people got some faith. If you got faith as the size of a grain of a mustard seed, it should be as easy for us to believe God to heal my family as it is for Him to do something great or mighty in my life. It's all the same because I just trust the God. Jesus shows us. He's told the man. The man they tore the roof off the house. Y'all remember that? They tore the roof off the house and laid the man down in front of him. And, and he said, is it easier for me to say thy sins be forgiven or for you to take up your bread bed and walk? Is that what he said? He said, which one's easier? It was the same. And that's what God wants to understand, that he wants us to experience the power of God the same way through every situation that's going on in our lives. If he healed you, of a headache, he'll be able to save your children. On, same, same faith. Amen? And that's what Paul's trying to see, that that, that testimony yeah, yeah. has been what? Confirmed in you so that ye come behind in no gift waiting for what? The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he's talking about the grace of the church. Uh, church, we have to encourage um, the body Christ oh so much today that Jesus is still on his way. Amen. Praise God. You know, he and Paul tells us to comfort one another what with these words. Because you know, I was, when I was a kid, we would read that scripture in church. I'm like, comfort one another. Like, you know, when you're a kid, you're kind of oblivious of what's going on in the world. You know, you're like, you know, only thing you know is mom, dad, and if mom and dad are trying to do right, trying to keep, you know, they, they they'll try to shield you from the cares of the world. They don't want you to grow up too fast. But when you start getting a little older, you're like, man, all this stuff been going on. Look, all this stuff been going on all the time. There's always been wars and rumors of wars. But when things start, when you get older, you I think you may become more attuned to things that are how bad man can actually get. It's not surprising as you get older, amen, why God wiped everybody out 
in Genesis chapter six. It start, it doesn't start not it doesn't start to surprise you. Because what happened when Genesis chapter six when Noah showed up? He said, men's heart were what? Continually what? Wicked. And God said, I'm going to do what? I'm going to wipe them all out. I'm going to raise up Noah to, to continue this generation. He had to raise up Noah. Y'all know why he had to raise up Noah, did he? He had to raise up Noah in chapter six because he made a promise in chapter three. <laughs> I'm going to let that go. I'll let y'all figure that out later. But he made a promise in chapter three that he's going to send a savior. Amen. And he's going to come in the lineage. Amen. And through, the, through becoming the lineage and the offspring of who? Of David. But guess what? He had to have somebody to, to cross the bridge. And Noah crossed the bridge from that world to a new world. And just like Jesus is going to help us cross the bridge from what? This world to everlasting life. Amen. Remember, the writer of Hebrew said what the first Adam could not do, the second Adam was able to bring it to pass. Amen. When the first Adam disobeyed God and allowed death and sin to come in, that's Adam. The second Adam, who was Jesus Christ, praise God, was able what? To destroy, to destroy the works of sin where? In the flesh. That we might become what, church? I'm getting happy now. That we might become what? The righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Check this out. Adam was saved, amen, up until he disobeyed. Right. Then he what? He spiritually what? Died. Then guess what? Christ comes and spiritually what? Revives us through the Holy Ghost. That though, watch this, we are delivered from what? The power of sin. We're delivered from the penalty of sin. But we still right now got to deal with the presence of sin in this earth. So God worked, you know, your, let me tell you something. Your salvation is a miracle. How am I going to still be saved in the midst of all this corruption? <laughs> God is saving you right now. And that's a miracle because guess what? Uh, Jesus said what? Narrow is the way that leadeth to what? To life. But broad is the way that leadeth to what? There are many ways I could go out of here the wrong way. But because of the grace of God, he points me on the right path. Amen? And that is nothing but God's grace in our life. You know, there's so many things that could take us out. But there's only one way. Praise God. He, Jesus said what? I am what? The way. I am what? The truth. I am what? The life. So Paul's trying to encourage the church here, amen, that we're waiting for who? And he said that uh, 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 we're getting close to the to, to the to, to the resurrection season, aren't we? Amen. You know, and then, you know, he goes out to uh, the, to Emmaus and says, in like manner, when he begins to the, uh, to ascend, he said, in like manner, I'm going to do what? I'm going to come back. I'm going to return for you. Yeah. So Jesus had made a promise to us. Do y'all believe what do y'all do? Y'all believe what Jesus said? Do you believe what Jesus has said? In the scriptures, I believe it. if he said he's coming back, guess what? He's coming back. And guess what? Though I have to go the way of the grave, or I'm transformed out of this life, it's going to be all right. Amen. Yeah. And that's the hope that we have, praise God, in God. That 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 that, that the Lord, uh, we used to sing a song in the church. I know if anybody's really, we don't sing it, but I wish we could learn it here. I know that the Lord will make a way. Oh, yes, he will. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody know that song? Remember, we used to sing that song in the church. Amen. I know the Lord. He'll make a way. Oh, yes, he will. He'll make a way, a way for you. I know that the Lord will see us through. Praise him. Amen. And that's and that's the promise that we have in God. Amen. That 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 that, that uh, 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 we're, we're, we know that he'll make a way out of the things that are going on in this world. Amen. Uh, we have to learn how to wear, wear this world as what church? A loose garment. Amen. And 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 that 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 we don't get so entangled up in what's going on here that we lose focus of our true priority is to save salvation of our soul and to say and allowing God to save those around us. Amen. Any questions, comments right there, verse seven, eight. Anybody? Nobody. I just like from verse eight, Pastor Rachel. You cannot stand before no one can stand before God and say they're blameless. Right. Amen. Yes, sir. Ding boom. Just the fact that you know God has chosen us from the foundation of this world. Yes. Which a lot of times we're not overlooking the things that are happening. We're shielded through it by working on our testimony that 
striving to be holy. Amen. We're, we're, we're working toward being what he wants us to be. Yes. We just don't, it doesn't have that, the world doesn't have that effect with their problems that, you know, they used to have when we were in the world. Yes. But the, 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 uh, the main point is that, uh, you know, we, we're preparing ourselves for heaven. But Amen. It's nothing new under the sun. Nothing new. Just that we're not living over there. Right. Right. And, and, you know, it's not about that we're better than anybody. It's just that the Lord saved us. Thank and you. guess what? Uh, our perspective is different than other people. Thank you know you. how um, you can deal with people on your job, right? We got people who work. We got jobs. We got jobs. And a, a, a problem can arise on, in the workplace, right? And you can ask five different people and five people, diff, people see five different things. You know what I'm saying? It's based off their what? Perspective. What is our perspective? My perspective, pers perspective, perspective, spec deals with what you see. Everybody heard those things called spectacles, glasses. That word spec in the middle of perspective deals on how you see something. And guess what? When I have the power of God in my life, it changes the way that I view life. Amen, amen. Can we say amen? amen? It's I see life with hope. Can I get an amen today? Anybody see hope? I see hope in the midst of everything. I still see hope. Praise him. I have life. I have abundance. I have grace. Everything's gonna still gonna be what, church? All right. Amen. And that is what God gives us. That's why. Uh, you know, I'm gonna say it again. In the old church, when 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 people used to tarry for the Holy Ghost, you know, we used to have used to have those mothers around the front. Oh, somebody know what I'm talking about, don't you? They have a mother, and guess what? They and after someone get the Holy Ghost, and they say, and they, and they say, you got you got the Holy Ghost. You know, they say they confess themselves they got the Holy Ghost, but then they come up with the Holy Ghost and they say, they said, no, there's joy in the Holy Ghost. There's righteousness, what joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. So they make you go back down there till you get some joy. Come on, somebody. Because you because the Bible says with joy, Isaiah chapter 11, uh, with joy shall you draw out the wells of salvation. So you got to have some joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Praise God. Amen. And if you ain't got no joy and you got the Holy Ghost, come on down to the altar. Make sure you get something before you get out of here. <laughs> Because you got to have the joy. Because the joy gives you hope. Amen. Praise him. So, 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 though we're dealing with things in our life, amen, you know, and stuff going on, guess what? The joy of the Lord still has to be my strength. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And guess what? It's not something I'm putting on. It's something that God gives me when I receive his spirit. Remember the fruits of the spirit are what? Love, joy, peace. Let's just stick with the big three. Love, joy, peace. Let's not even talk about the rest of them. Let's stick with the big three. Love, joy, peace. So, 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 so I gotta have some love. And if I don't have no love, God's gonna give me some love. How he's gonna give me love? Because he showed me love. That's right. And guess what? Because he showed me love, now I can give love. He'll take an unlovable person and make them lovable. Praise him. He'll take someone who's who's downtrodden and speak a speak joy in their life. He'll take, he'll take, amen, a situation when turbulence is all around and speak peace into their, into their situation. Yeah. That's God. Yeah. Amen. That's why I'm so glad that the Holy Ghost does more than make me jump and shout. Oh, I love to jump and shout. I might jump and shout a little bit later. Yeah. Praise him. Dick Cruz jumped and shout in the last two weeks. Praise God. I'm trying to get me happy. Praise him. Praise him. Yeah. Amen. So God wants us to enjoy him. Anybody enjoying your salvation? Yeah. I'm enjoying my salvation. Yeah. Praise God. I'm enjoying it so that it may be so, 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 so I'm getting back. So in verse number eight, who shall he also confirm you by unto the end that ye may be blameless in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I've already talked about that. I want to be able to stand before God and be able to say him say, well done. I'm going to say it again. I want to say well done. Because I have allowed Christ in my life. You know, in the court of law, you have a right to decide who's going to represent you. You have a right who's going to be your attorney. 
that and and between the attorney and the uh, client there is a uh, what they call client attorney privilege right and with the client attorney privilege there's things that you tell your attorney that the attorney represents to the judge but they don't need to know all the groovy details so church let me tell you something I just see Jesus saying, well done before God. And you say, uh, God, we don't need to cover all the groovy details because that's covered by the blood. <laughs> but we got but we got to give an account for every deed in our body, everything we say. I understand that. But I'm so glad that the blood does what? It covers us. Praise him. And because, watch this, and because I chose Jesus to be my attorney, now he has the ability to advocate for me. Right. Praise him. What they say, a person who who, who represents himself is not wise. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna say the word, but you know, it's not wise. You stand stand before God by yourself. You ain't gonna get too far. Amen. Praise him. We need God to step in and be, you know, when we look at this thing, God has done all this for us, church. Amen. All God asks us to do what? To give him praise. In all things, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus doing what? Concerning you. So we have to know that we have to be able to, I'm looking to be able to stand blameless. Not because I didn't do nothing, but, be, but because I took the right steps to make sure that God can say well done in my life. Amen. What are the right steps? I'm going to tell you what the right steps are. The right steps. Let's just start with, with one right step. Just do the Ten Commandments. Let's start with the Ten Commandments. <laughs> you know, people laugh at Pastor when I say that. What the Ten Commandments got to do with anything? They got a lot to do with some stuff. You tell people, you know, let's not even talk about getting saved yet. Let's just, let's just try to do the Ten Commandments. Let's strive not to steal, not to lie, right. not to want stuff that don't belong to you. Yes, <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise him. Let's, 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 let's try. Let's try to. Let's not use the name of the Lord in vain. You get to the. You, if you're able to get through the Ten Commandments, man, you on the way. You you on the right road. But that's what that's what the Bible says about the law. The law was my what? My schoolmaster. That was what pointing me to who? To Jesus Christ. Uh, right. I tell people all the time. I said. I said. You know what? They they talk to me about. Oh, well, you know. I don't know if I can do all that stuff. The Bible says. I say. Well, I tell you what. Let's just I open up and give. I said, let's just stick with the 10. Let's start with the 10 commandments. And guess what? 99.99 times happens. And you know what? You're not supposed to be able to do it without, without God. <laughs> You're not be able to do it. I, I saw I saw a hand over here. You see? All right. So, so, so I say all that to say this. The Lord is working on your case for you about things you don't even realize he's working on your case about. <laughs> so that you can stand blameless and that God is faithful in verse 9. God is faithful to whom ye are called into the fellowship of his son by Jesus Christ our Lord. How many know that God is faithful? Amen. When we're unfaithful, he's still faithful. Amen. You messed up yesterday and you still wake up the next day. He's faithful. Amen. I didn't dot every I, I didn't cross every T, but he's still what? Faithful unto me. And, it's, and watch this. His faithfulness is not about who I am. His faithfulness is about who he is. Hallelujah. And I thank God, hallelujah, that he is, he is no respecter of persons. That he'll be faithful in, in every situation, even to the end. Amen. Praise God. He knows. Watch this. He knows that we. We waver. We waver. Some days we believe God. Why y'all looking at me like that? Some days we believe God. And some days we we, we we like the man that came to Jesus. Lord, I believe. But help thou my what? My unbelief. Praise him. We waver some days. But I'm so glad that God. Amen. Is the one. You know, he says that in Psalms, is it Psalms 1? And he shall uh, uh, lead us beside, I think, by, beside what? The still waters. God, God, 23. God is those 
still waters. Those still something that is what that was in my life. That is what steady in my life. Amen. And you shall be transplanted by the trees of what of, of of living water. But but those are those the, that still water. Now water is something that seeks its own level. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? And when water is it seeks a level and is in a place where there's no turbulence, it's what it's settled. It's like it's like going out to the lake where there's no wind and that that water is just what it's just just settled. And guess what? That's what God wants to do in your life. Paul talks about that. He'll settle you. He'll season you. He'll stabilize you. Amen. Amen. So that when so that when things start going like this, you stay smooth. Amen. And able to, to stay in control and calm in the midst of whatever comes up in your life. See, the enemy wants to create turbulence in your life. He wants to upset what, uh, the proverbial apple cart in your life and trying to see how you're going to respond. Praise him. You know, let me share something with you. When Peter got on the water, that water was not stable. There was waves. Peter was not just walking on water, y'all. Peter was walking on top of waves, on top of turbulence. Oh, come on, somebody. Praise him. It wasn't smooth. That's why the Bible says that, that when he starts seeing himself walking on top of waves, he said, how am I doing this? I got out the boat, first of all. Praise God. Then I get out the boat, and, the, and, and now I'm walking on top of the turbulence in my life. That's what faith does. Faith allows you to walk on top of the turbulent things that, are that the enemy is trying to bring into your life. As long as you keep your focus... On Christ, and just in case you lose your focus, Christ has his hand out there trying to steal for you. I feel like preaching. Let me calm down. It's Sunday school. Let me get back to my lesson. God is what church? He's faithful. By whom ye are you're called into what? This fellowship of Christ Jesus. That's why we break bread at the table because we want to continue continue what? The fellowship of God. Amen. But that's what Paul's, Paul's encouraging the church. Now, Paul builds the church all this up, and now he's going to deal with something. He builds the church up, and, uh, and now he's going to deal with. So Paul's trying to give them. I love Paul because Paul was, was the one that built the case, and then he laid out his, 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 um, uh, his defense or his accusation. So he built the case. So now he, he done built the case about the grace of God. He's built the case about being in God. He, he has built the case about being enriched by God. And now Paul's letting know because of all this is going on, praise God. In verse 10, he says, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus, that you do what? Speak the same thing. And that there be what? No divisions among you. That ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the what? Same judgment. So Paul is trying to show them because of what Christ has done in our lives and in the body of Christ, praise the Lord, these should be uh, persuading factors for us to be able to continue to what? Work together. Even in the midst of our what? Differences. Church, we are the body, or the Corinthian church was the body of what? Baptized believers. There was people from all different types of walks all different types of backgrounds, and they were coming under the unifying nature of being in Christ. But how many of you know that when you do that, in the spirit, you bring your flesh with you? Am I, am I right about it? You bring, you bring your flesh with you. You can't, you can't, I love people say, I'm with you in spirit. No, I need you to be here physically with me. <laughs> That's what COVID has taught us is that we can be in spirit, but you know, we're we are people who need fellowship. Man needs to be in the presence of other people. Even the person who is uh in solitary confinement, they gotta let him out at least once a, a once every day, or he'll go crazy. Be about so there's a there's this this need or demand for the necessity of fellowship. And guess what? When we come together. And we come together in things of spiritual matters, we will still see things, like I said earlier, we have a tendency to see things that are different based on our background. Each one of us, under the sound of my voice today, have, have had a different background growing up. What they call that, pray God, is the culture of your life. And in the culture of your life, there were certain things that were acceptable and certain things that were not. I'll give you one about 
me and my wife real quick. You know, when we grew up, nobody got to come to our house. You didn't get no no friends coming over your house. It, was, it wasn't happening. My dad, one of the last things my dad said, don't you let nobody in this house. I can hear him right now. Jesus, don't let you let nobody in this house while I'm gone. All right. She grew up in the sense where uh, she lived in a neighborhood where there's a lot. I didn't live in a neighborhood with a lot of kids, but she had a neighborhood with a lot of kids. And she said, everybody came to her house because she had a basketball goal in her driveway. So everybody would come down and play basketball at her house. I told her, the devil is on that. That ain't happening. <laughs> I said, it ain't happening when I grew up. <laughs> she said, what? Everybody was, I said, people. You, and I see Alex kind of be the same way. He, he's very social, like his mother. And I, you know, we were kind of kept by, you know, if, if it wasn't church, it wasn't happening. Let me just say that. We didn't spend the night over nobody's house, and, and you barely got to spend your night over your grandmama's house. That was only one night. And if you spend your night over, over my grandmother's house, she was the Sunday school teacher, so we don't have to stay Saturday night because we had to be at church early. <laughs> So we, went, we only stay Friday night. <laughs> Praise him. But, but when we talk about allowing things for my son, we have a, we have a varying factor about that. And we had a pretty, um, uh, as, as crazy as it sounds, we had a pretty heated discussion about that. But that was just based on what? Our, our raising up. And I, and, our, I say, and I thought about saying, man, that sounds really silly. We up here having a heated discussion about this. But that's in us. And guess what? I'm saved. And she's saved. But we see things differently. And that can cause what? Division. And that's what was going on in the Corinthian church. Though they were filled with the spirit of God. Though they were loving Jesus Christ with all their heart. Because of things, because we still got to deal with natural things. Our experiences can keep us from doing what? Coming together. And that's why we got to be able to what? That's why he says right here, we got to be able to what? Talk through some things. Amen. The Bible says, know them that what? Labor. How are you gonna know them if if we don't if you don't talk to some, at least say talk to them? You know, uh, uh you know, you gotta talk to people, you just gotta encourage people, you just got to, you know, you know, we don't shake hands, you gotta give a little fist bump or something nowadays. Come on, somebody, and say, Hey, praise God, God bless you. Amen. But he was saying here that that they got to do what? Be able to do what? Speak the same thing. Amen. And that there be what? No. Divisions among you, that you be what? Perfectly joined together in what? The same mind and in what? The same judgment. Praise God. If Paul's letting them know, praise God, that these, 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 these things, praise God, were not merely uh, uh, just spiritual or emotional. It was like-mindedness. And like-mindedness deals with, my time up? Amen. Like-mindedness, praise God, that we have to be able, church, to uh, ask God to help us come together. Amen. But now, to, like, for example, if I can talk about myself for that example now, you know, we I got to consider some things. And guess what? Some things that we have issues with are, you know, sometimes they are harmful, but sometimes they're not. They're just different. Amen. They're just different. That's all. I mean, if I wish I could call Captain Kurt and he just transport us. I don't want to travel. But just say, hey, Scotty, beam me up, beam me over there to uh, to, to to Nigeria. Let's go to a Nigerian church this morning. Man, we get in that Nigerian church and they get to praising God. Y'all be like this. <laughs> These folks ain't say. <laughs> and guess what? If they transported them here to our church, they'd be like, what y'all doing in church? <laughs> because cultural norms are different. Praise him. Cultural norms are different. And they'd be like, is that the way? It's supposed to be? Yeah. They would have a problem until they were able to what? Adjust to it. And you have to adjust to it. And, but 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 what we're doing is not wrong. And what they're doing is not wrong. Those two things are just different. And that's what we have to understand. Sometimes arguments come up because things are just different. And guess what? If we're not one who can kind of open our mind, that's why he says like mindedness. He didn't say like spiritness. He didn't say like emotionalness. He said like mindedness. And in your mind is where you make your decision. It's in your mind. That's why he said, let this mind be in you. That was also where. And man, think about what God had to do with Jesus Christ. He said, man, I got to get out of my, my glory and step down into this body and deal with these folks. That's exactly what he said. 
And guess what he did? He did it with love and joy and peace. Amen. Amen. And God is calling us. And if God was able to do that, he's given us the same power to ask God to help us to be able to embrace some things that are a little different, Amen. though they're not wrong. Right. Right. Amen. Praise God. You want green beans and, and somebody else wants collard greens. We always had collard greens that we can already have Thanksgiving dinner. I'm going to tell you how division show up in the church. We can already have Thanksgiving dinner at the church and we're going to set the menu. I know people right now for Thanksgiving ain't ate a piece of turkey at all for Thanksgiving. But we got to have turkey. <laughs> we might not need to have turkey. We might need to have something else. But because you ain't getting your turkey, you leave the committee and go on home and then you leave the church over a piece of turkey. And you think it ain't true. It's the truth. It's the truth. Over a piece of turkey. Turkey? No, play. Y'all have uh, <laughs> Thank you for the praise Hill. <laughs> praise Hill. Paul had to deal with this in the other church. He said, Paul had to deal with this in our time. Was Paul had to deal with another church. He said, there are different administrations, but the self same spirit. You know, people who've gone to one church and only experienced things done one way, they go to another church, become a member, then sometimes they have a hard time. They say, uh, uh, that's what happens. They go, uh. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? What's that thing y'all like to say now in 2022? You feel a certain kind of way. You feel a certain kind of way, but that's in your flesh. Right, exactly. So the Holy Ghost, look, let me finish. My time up, it is. He says here, uh, uh, speak the same thing, no division among you, and be what? Be mature, perfectly, be maturely joining together in the same mind and in the same judgment. I'm going to say one more thing before I finish up. If the church was filled with people Exactly like you, we'd be in trouble. We'd be in trouble. But thank God that we are the body of what? Baptized believers. Let me just read through this. For it hath been declared unto me, unto you, my brethren, I'm in verse 11, by them which are the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. So now there's cliques in the church. Well, there don't be no cliques in the church. Love everybody. Don't let the west side not, not talk to the east side. Or the north side not talk to the south side. Are those in the front of the church not talk to the one in the back of the church? <laughs> Praise him. Amen. You know, they used to put one door in the church. I'm so glad we got one door in the church. I grew up in a church where there was about five doors. And people sat by side the door. And when church dismissed, people went out the door. Never talked to somebody who was on the other side of the church. I thought it was absolutely. I would sit there. And I first got in church. I said, that's amazing. But guess what, church? I'm glad we got one door so, so I can stand at the door and catch all y'all. <laughs> Praise him. Because that, that, that brings down what? Contention in the church. He says here uh, that, that, that now this I say that every one of you saith, I'm a Paul, I'm a Paulos, I'm a Steve, and I'm a Christ. Is Christ divided? Paul's asking the question. Is Christ divided, church? He's not. Was Paul crucified for you? No. Were we baptized into the name of Paul? No. I thank God that I was baptized. I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius. And let's any should say that I had baptized in my own name, and I baptized also the house of Stephanopoulos. Beside, I know not whether I baptized any other. Now, remember the concept of baptism in the Old Testament. I'm gonna finish up here. You had to go. The priest had to do what? Go into wash at the wash pot before they went into the holy place. All right. So the concept of this baptism or use of water was in the Old Testament. In the New Testament. Under Jewish law, if you were a rabbi and you were being a convert into, amen, into Judaism, you would get baptized by the, 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 the rabbi and they would call their name over you. So Paul was initially set at the feet of Gamal. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. Paul probably was baptized unto Gamal's baptism. But what happened? When Jesus comes 33 years, he was considered a a teacher or a rabbi and they had to bat and then when he says be baptized in his name praise god you would identify with that particular person's teaching so church when we are baptized in the name of jesus we need to that that signifies that we identify with his 
teaching along with his what? His experience. What was Jesus teaching? His teaching, he, Jesus taught the kingdom of God. But then his experience was what? Remission of sins. His death, burial, and what? Resurrection. That's why, another reason why you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Because he's your high priest. He's your advocate. He's your teacher. Get happy. I have my time up in the day. I can't see that clock, but I know my time is up. We got to get us a bigger clock. <laughs> I'm going to turn it over. But look, church, I challenge everybody today. Can I, can I politely challenge y'all? Make sure before you go today that you just go by and make an attempt to try to fist bump everybody and say glad to see you before you leave today. Amen? And guess what that'll do? That'll bring down what? Contentions and divisions in the church. God bless you. I'll turn back over to Deacon Goo in Jesus' name.